All right, so first step, I set my denominator equal to zero. That factors to be x minus 3 and x plus 1, which then gives me x minus 3 equals 0, which means x is equal to 3, and x plus 1 equals 0, which means x is equal to negative 1. So my domain is all real numbers but x cannot be equal to negative 1 or positive 3. Agree. Okay. This function factors to be 2 and x plus 1 and x plus 1 and x minus 3 and x plus 1, which means then that those x plus 1s cancel each other out, which means there's a hole. Okay. So on my new function then, I only have one vertical asymptote, and that's x equals 3. On my new function, the degree of the top is 1, the degree of the bottom is 1, so that means my horizontal asymptote is same over same. Lead coefficient up top is 2, lead coefficient on the bottom is 1, which means y equals 2 there. In my new function, if I plug in, oops, if I plug in the... 0 in for x to find my y-intercept, I'd have 2 times 1, which is 2, all over negative 3, so I'd have 0 comma negative 2 thirds. Agree with that. Okay. In my new function, if I set my numerator equal to 0, first I'd divide by 2, then I would subtract 1, I get an x-intercept of negative 1, comma, 0. Agree? Okay, love it so far. However, there was a hole. So because of the fact that there was a hole, we should go out and find where said hole is. So... I have a hole at, if I go x plus 1 equals 0, that's what I factored out, that gives me x equals negative 1, and if I put negative 1 into my function, I get 0. Well, I can't have a hole and an intercept at the exact same point, so which one takes precedence? The whole takes precedence, or takes preference, or whatever you want to call it. So that one goes away and becomes that there is none there. Because it became a whole in the next step. Okay? And we've been talking about holes all week, and last week too, about how they're not filled in. Okay? If we kept it there, we would fill in our hole, and that's just not good math. Okay. Slant asymptote. Do I have a slant asymptote? Nope. No slant on this one. Because the degrees were the same. 1 over 1. Okay. So let's all put that on there now. So we've got uh, x equals 3 here is my vertical. y equals 2 is my horizontal, 0 comma negative 2 thirds is my int, my x-intercept x -intercept went away, my 
whole then became negative 1, comma, 0. Okay. And then we just got to fill in now with some points. So if I went with, if I go with positive 1 and I put that in there, 1 plus 1 is 2 times 2 is 4. 1 minus 3 is negative 2, so 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. If I put in 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, times 2 is 6, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, so that's negative 6. 2, 4, and 6 there. Okay. So that should give me enough over here. Two come in lift up and go down. Okay. Over here, one, two, three, four, let's go with. Four plus one is five times two is ten. 5 minus, or excuse me, 4 minus 3 is 1, so that's at 10. Okay. 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, times 2 is 12, divided by 2 is 6, 2, 4, and 6. Let's go 7 next. 8, 16 over 4 is 4. So that's enough over there. Yes, ma'am. No. Top degree is one, right? Bottom degree is one. Okay. Even in the original. Even in the original. It's hidden in the original. In the original, the top degree is right there. It's the exponent that's on there. So it's 2 over 2. So it's same over same. And if I cancel something out, I'm canceling it top and bottom. So it'll always be same over same. Okay? Good? All right. Let's do one more. Yes! Go for it. This down. That over. All right. So, first step. X squared minus 4 equals 0. X squared equals 4. X is equal to plus or minus 2. So my domain is all real numbers. X cannot equal plus or minus 2. Yes, I'm guessing we are all in agreement so far. Yep. Okay. Factored, this one becomes, I can factor out an X. Anything cancel. Psst. Anything cancel. No? Nope. Okay, so that means my vertical asymptotes. Are there. Degree of the top. Degree of the top. Degree of the top. Three. Degree of the bottom. Two. Big over small means what? 
None for horizontal asymptotes. However, what? There's a slant asymptote because they differ by one. Okay, so they differ by one. There's a slant asymptote then. So that'll come back later. Y intercept. Zero comma zero. If I plug in zero into here, I get zero. If I plug zero into there, I get zero. So that gives me zero on top. Plug it in there, I get zero minus four, zero over negative four, still zero. Okay. X intercepts. X intercepts. And? And zero comma zero. Yeah. So if I plug in, so I set the top here equal to zero, then x would equal 0, and that gives me 0, so that's my 0 comma 0. If I have x minus 3 equals 0, that gives me three, x equals 3, so that's 3 comma 0. x plus 3 equals 0, that gives me x equals negative 3, and it gives me negative 3 comma 0. Okay? Uh, holes are next. Do we have a hole? No hole because nothing canceled out. Okay. So then that leaves us with our old, our new friend, I shouldn't say our old friend, our new friend, the slant asymptotes. Okay. So my function was x cubed minus 9x all over x squared minus 4. Can I use synthetic division? No, I can't because it's not 1x plus or minus some number on the bottom. Okay, so that means I've got to use long division. x squared minus 4 divided into x cubed plus 0x squared minus 9x plus 0. And to make my first look the same, so that's going to be multiplying by x. That gives me, so here I'm going to go x times x squared minus 4, x cubed minus 4x. Change the signs. Bring down the zero. Is there any way that I can get x to be 5x? No. So that leaves that then as my remainder. So this divided out is x plus negative 5x over x squared minus 4. Now what do I do? Drop the remainder. And what's left over is my slant asymptote. So my slant asymptote here is y equals x. Okay. So then let's take a moment here to put all that fun stuff on there. So we've got a vertical asymptote at 2 and negative 2. 
We've got no horizontal asymptote. We've got a y-intercept at 0. We've got an x-intercept at the origin at negative 3, 0 and positive 3, 0. No hole. And then we have a slant asymptote. There. Oops, let me move that one up a little bit. Oops, whoops, that one. Oh, now I missed. Why did I miss? Oh, try one. Oh, that's because I went one too many over. That one. There we go. Now we got it. Okay. So. Let's try in this zone over here. Let's try one, two, three, negative four. If I put negative four into my function, negative four cubed is 60, is, excuse me, is negative 64 plus 36. So negative 64 plus 36. Uh, that's going to get me 4 to 40, 28, negative 28. And on the bottom, I get 4 squared minus 4 is 12. So that's a little bit more than negative 2. Somewhere in there. So that gives me... Long, up, and there. Agree? Put in positive 4, and the only thing that changes is the top is now positive. So we're at 28 over 12, which is a little bit more than 2. So we're there. And then we can draw it in. And it's going to come along our slant, twist down, hug and hug. Love it. Now we just got the middle section, right? Okay. So if I put in positive 1 into the middle section, I get negative 8. Oops, I don't want to put it there. I get negative 8 over negative 3, which is 2. Actually, it's 2 and 2 thirds. It's up there more. Two and two thirds. If I put in negative 1, I get positive 8 over negative 3 which is negative 2 and 2 thirds. So in the middle here, it looks like that. Okay. Any questions? That's why we put pick points to plot. Oh, this oh. Yep, I did them right here. Yep.